Hey, so hot take. I think the skill of video production is going to become a very valuable skill for people to have in the future. A lot like being able to build yourself a website is seen as a very valuable skill today that complements several different types of jobs. And so in the next year, I'm setting a goal to publish one new video per week. And that's gonna go through the entire process from ideation to scripting to filming and editing and then finally publishing. And so on this video, I wanna talk about the different processes that I'm going through in order to go through that stage of, of creation. And we'll talk about some things that are working and some things that aren't working so well. So let's get started. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Ron, and on this channel, we discuss the various strategies and frameworks that I'm using to live a more productive, fulfilling life. We're getting toward the end of the year, and I use this time to set new goals for the next year to come. One of the goals that I have for 2023 is to become a content creator, and I'm documenting the journey along the way. So I'm gonna be sharing my five steps to go from an idea to a published video each week. And I'm still pretty new to this stuff, so don't take any of this as expert advice, but I think it'll be interesting to look back at this video one day and see what's changed along the way. And stick around to the end of this video because I'm also going to be sharing a framework for how I think about the various areas of my life and that acts as a really good way for me to generate ideas for other videos to be produced in the future. So let's get started. So the first step is ideating videos. And so much of this process is about this mental game and deciding that my perspective is one that's worth sharing. And so I come from this very humble background in a big family where we were taught and not to hog the spotlight. So I've always downplayed my personal opinions and prefer to be more of the listener rather than the talker. But the truth is that I do have a unique perspective and that perspective can be helpful to people. So I, a lot of this ideation phase is about embodying this mindset of documenting my life and the frameworks for living life well. I use an app called Notion to keep a database of those various video ideas. And for now, a lot of those ideas are about the various areas of my life. More on this later. Each week, I'm deciding on the next idea to develop further and that leads us into scripting. So the next step is scripting, which is my process of going from an idea into a written outline that's ready to be recorded. So scripting has been this iterative process for me, and honestly, I'm still figuring it out. At first, I was writing entire word-for-word -word scripts, and then I'd try to memorize and then recite them on camera, which was just hilariously awkward to watch. And so next, I went to the other side of the spectrum where I was writing these very sparse outlines with just little words that I would try to improvise over and just make up on the spot, but that was leading to a lot of uhs and ums as I was scrambling to figure out what to say, uh, which also wasn't great. So now I'm landing somewhere in the middle where I do write out a little bit more of an outline, but I'm capitalizing certain words so that it's really easy to scan through them. So I can speak more naturally and then I can just keep up with myself as I'm working through the script on camera. It's still a super awkward process, but I know I'm embracing the awkward and getting better at it over time. The next step is about filming, and this has been a lot of fun for me. I'm a technology enthusiast, and so I love learning about new gear and getting into the videography process. It's been great slowly leveling up my gear over time just to improve the quality of my videos. And so a pro tip that I've learned here is to focus on audio, lighting, video, and staging in that order. And so I've made a few gear upgrades in order to improve across those with a shotgun microphone, uh, some lighting, um, a, a new camera, uh, and just some a tripod and some some various equipment just to stage uh, my, my set a little bit. But the other part of this is the filming process itself. And the biggest goal here has been to make it easy. I'm finding that complexity is the enemy of execution. So I'm doing as much as I can to go from zero to recording in as little time as possible. And again, a lot of this process is about embracing the awkwardness. So I'm really taking for granted how natural people can come across on camera when they're probably in a room by themselves talking to an inanimate object. So this part involves a lot of reading lines from a script, hitting record, saying them, messing up, trying again, saying them, messing up, trying again, so and so on, until I get it right. But it's a process. I'm still also just trying to figure out this idea of camera confidence, which is, you know, I'm really learning about, it's just being authentic, being my authentic self on camera, uh, which again is really challenging when you're probably talking to an inanimate object and trying to come off as if you're talking to a friend across the table, but it's a work in progress. I feel like I'm really animated on camera, and of course I hate the sound of my voice whenever I hear it on a video, but I think I'm gradually honing it into a more natural vibe that's energetic and engaging, yet focused enough that it doesn't become a distraction to the video. So, still a work in progress. So the next phase of this process, after I'm done all the recording and getting all the footage, is the editing process. And again, I'm actually really liking this part of the process because it's very technical and it's somewhat monotonous, but I'm actually really enjoying getting into the flow of the editing workflow. 
I'm really liking learning about all the different video editing software that there is and the best practices for editing in a way that tells a really concise, structured, focused story uh, that keeps people's attention. Something I've been doing so far is running most of my video editing workflow on a 2020 iPad Pro, which is part of this personal experiment that I've been on to see if I can get all of my personal productivity done just off of an iPad, which has been an interesting uh, change coming from a desktop computer. But I've been using this iPad app called LumaFusion, which has been a really cool learning process to get into. And so far, it's been, it's been working pretty well. I'm still super new to the app, and so I feel really inefficient, and the quality of my edits still feels like it has a long way to go, but I feel like I'm doing okay. And so in the future, I think I'd love to experiment with an app like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, which seem to be a little bit closer to the industry standards, but for now, LumaFusion is doing great. Okay, so that brings us to the final step, which is the publishing step. And this comes right back to all of that mental game that I was talking about during that ideation stage. There's some processing work that I go through to finalize the edit and prepare it for publishing. And I export the video at the right settings. I might write a title and a description, add some tags. But then the next step so far has been me just staring at the screen gripped by fear. And again, here come all those thoughts of why do I think anyone would find this useful? And isn't my mom going to see this and worry that I'm depressed? And aren't my coworkers going to see this and realize I'm actually kind of crazy? And the biggest challenge of this step is just hitting the publish button. So what's been the biggest game changer for me is having a few very close friends who I know very well, they know me very well, and I know that they aren't going to judge me and I know that they're going to encourage me. And when I'm frozen over the publish button, I send them the video and you know what they say? Wow, Ron, that's actually really good. And you know what? They might be lying through their teeth, but that's just the encouragement that I need to say YOLO and I smash that publish button and then the video goes live. So that's my process for publishing a video per week, and I intend to keep refining this process over the course of the next year so that hopefully I get better at it over time. Now, I want to leave you with a framework that I use to think about the different areas of my life. I call them my life pillars. And during my ideation stage, a lot of what I'm doing is just surveying the different areas of my life pillars to generate ideas that might be worth talking about in a future video. So I'm going to give you a preview of this. This is going to be a longer video one day, but We'll talk about it more uh, over time. So pillar number one is about health and wellness. I think about this as the wellness of my body, which is my one vessel for navigating through this life. So I think about my exercise, diet, sleep, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, all of these things that are the foundation for the other areas of my life. That's why I talk about it first. The second is around work and wealth. I think about that as the different areas in which I am serving the world by applying my skills uh, and then generating value that I'm using to support my lifestyle and invest for the future. So I think about this as my day job and my career. I think about this as my secondary side hustle uh, pursuits. I also think about this as volunteerism and the ways that I'm giving my gifts more freely. And then I also think about this in my finances. Uh, and I think about that as the ways that I'm generating value and then spending that value to, again, support my lifestyle and invest in additional value over time. Pillar number three is about relationships and love. And so I think about that as my relationship to myself, but also about my relationship to my family, my friends, my romantic partner, my communities, uh, and all of the ways in which I connect with other people across the world. And then pillar number four is around play and recreation. So this is around non-productive things that I'm just doing out of fun and joy and leisure. So this includes hobbies, skills, playing piano, uh, running, building a household, uh, and all the things that I do just to balance out my life. We'll talk more about this in a future video, but this is the framework that I use to evaluate what's going on across my life and identify new video ideas. It also gives me a great way to think about goals that I might want to set over the course of time, which I express through objectives and key results. Those are OKRs, and we'll talk about that on a future video as well. So wrapping up, did you like this video? If so, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, I would love to see you subscribe to the channel so you can come back for more. And if you're ready to take it up to the next level, ring that notification bell so you can find out whenever new videos like this are published. And one more thing, if this video has you thinking about maybe recording your own videos or maybe has you thinking about life in a different way, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. So go ahead and chime in 
And with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.